Hey guys, today I am going to talk about the financial viability of opening a Magic the Game store in 2023. And one thing that you should know is a lot of sales, they, I mean, let's kind of break down how a Magic store makes money. Uh, you can be selling sealed product like the newest booster box, bundles, decks. There's a lot of sealed, I'll put sealed product. You could be selling singles, right? Singles would be obviously just singles. And then you could be selling ancillary products, which could be food, food, drink, snacks. It could be uh, accessories like play mats and dice or something like that. So let's go with uh, sealed boxes. As I mentioned many times before, the price that the distributor charges you for sealed boxes is incredibly high. In my opinion, it's almost like Wizard of Coast doesn't want you to make money from selling sealed, given that the margins and the MSRP, which everyone ignores, right, is very, very, very high, and they continue to increase the price, even though we are in a recession. So, surprisingly, you know, taking a look at the draft set, which is 60, 36 booster packs, I think they have 15 cards a pack. That's a lot of cards, right? And it's actually the more expensive you go, the less cards you get. So it's very weird, right? So a set booster box only has not uh, 30 packs and about 12 cards a pack. Then the collector booster box has even less packs and even, I mean, in the overall amount. So they should be getting cheaper to make, not more expensive, but you know, what do I know, right? And it should be cheaper to ship as well because it's less heavy. You know, if you compare a collector's booster box versus a draft box or even a set box, you can think, oh wow, this one is really heavy. So a lot of product, very few of the product are you gonna make money from. This is not a Pokemon situation where you have a Evolving Skies and the Evolving Skies, even if the other product, Chilling Rain, Fusion Strike, they're kind of slower sellers. Your revolving skies, they're sell out and you'll be able to sell, you'll be able to charge triple the amount of money that you bought it for. So that is a winner and that will win you. Not every product has to be margin plus, but you, you hope that one product is, you hope that something is, right? And magic, that's just not the case with steel. We can go over product by product by product in the live stream and I can just go over the cost and how much we sell it for, how much we get it for and it's hard and you're competing against Amazon, you're competing against distributors, pretending to be stores online. Not really a good place to be, honestly. Singles. Singles is very risky because like you can see when the singles can crash down in price and at any given time, you have the risk, right? When you buy the single from the player, the, the, you are not just buying the card, you're buying the risk associated with the card. Uh, common risk factors inc include it can be reprinted, which would tank the card. It can, let's say, to get rid of the reserve list. So even the reserve list, the sacred reserve list may not be so sacred anymore, depending on how they do the new backs, right? Or they do an old back. You take the risk. So when you buy a single card, you take the risk of it going down. You, again, you also have the benefit that it might go up. But in a recession time, right, like right now, that's not really going to work, you know, <laughs> I mean, all cards have gone down. It doesn't matter if you're a sports card, you are a football, basketball card, it doesn't matter if you are a hockey card or a Pokemon card or a Meta Zoo flesh and blood card, it's gonna go down in price. Uh, it's just where it is. I would not be surprised. I mean, if you look at the Magic Index, I wouldn't be surprised if most of the top cards went down 50% or more because that's where the buy, the buy list is under, I mean, it's low, low, low. It's, it's so low that it's becoming attractive even to me. Uh, and I, I shouldn't be buying these cards on this card, right? But it is, I mean, I have never seen prices. The only one other time I've seen prices this low recently, so obviously maybe five, six, ten years ago it was low, was uh, when COVID-19 COVID started in people, you know, GP Houston just got canceled. Actually, it wasn't canceled until later on. That was when there was no buy list. So the only thing worse than this really low buy list, so I've never seen a buy list this low before. 
but I have seen a time where there was simply no buy list. So, I mean, they give it a grain of salt. I mean, which is worse, right? Having no, I mean, obviously having no buy list is probably worse, right? So prices on single is not gonna work. I, I always hear this time, oh, you can get food and beer. You know how smelly a game store is and how sweaty, and I, at least we, I live in Houston, so it's very warm all the time. And a lot of game stores, I remember Bad Wolf Gaming, or what is it called? No, Battle Bunker Gaming, and they would never ever turn on. They didn't even have AC available. So they just use fans. It's like a hundred degrees outside, and yeah, you know, it's smelly. It's, I. You look at you know the belt situation with the butt cracks, right? I mean, is this really like a nice place to eat dinner? I I don't think so. Like people keep continuing to tell me, oh, you can do food and cafe. We tried that model, by the way. It bankrupt. Uh, there was an esports uh, store uh, where I used to go. They had pretty good food. The food was actually very good. But the problem was when you're gaming and you're playing League of Legends for eight to 10 hours and one C, you're sweaty, right? You're probably drinking Mountain Dew, using the bathroom God knows how many times. Yeah, you're not going to smell really good for an outside person to come in and be like, oh, hey, I want to eat some food here. So that store bankrupt, it was called like Esports Cafe or something, something very generic, you know, for SEO purposes. And that store model did not work. So a lot of people say, hey, my store offers beer. And I used to think this was very smart. But then I did a little bit more studying and researching. I was like, oh, okay, so this is the problem with it. The problem is, you know, if you are playing video games or playing magic for long periods of time, you know, people are smelly. They get sweaty, they get smelly, they probably don't have belts on. So their butt crack is, you know, past, they're probably farting. Let's be honest, most magic players, they go to the magic store for the, to use the bathroom and the fart. I mean, this is the, <laughs> let, let's just be honest. If you went to a nice gala, you're probably going to hold in your fart, right? But if you go to a magic f and you're probably farting loads. You, I mean, you're probably just trying to make as much gas as you can because that's the uh, standard in the magic places. So I, I don't know what these people are selling food wise, but I think it's pretty gross, right? Hey, so you're eating your nice, you know, sandwich and then you look around and it's a bunch of butt cracks. Some of the butt cracks are passing gas. They don't even hide the noise or anything. They don't care. They don't care. Magic players don't care. Uh, they are more than happy to fart in your face while you eat your food. Uh, so it's pretty gross. So again, is this really, you know, you know, a, a cafe that you can open. I don't think long term it can, because like here's the thing, right? Like the food at, at this store can never be as good. It's more expensive and can never be as good as food outside because the the space it's a store. And if you're buying food in a store, it's going to be lower quality because they don't have a chef or anything. I mean, you're not in a restaurant, okay? It's not a restaurant. So if you want to play magic, play magic. If you want to eat at a nice restaurant, eat at a nice restaurant. You don't really can't do both because of the smell. Uh, the other thing, dice and play. I mean, how many play mats do we need? And this is my, my concern about the Rudy 6.9 is like with the MetaZoo 5 play mats. Who needs any more play mats? If you've been playing magic, you know you just randomly get play mats every event, every pro event, they give you some play mat. They give you this play mat and that play mat and this play mat. All my play mats are custom. I probably own over 2,000 play mats. And the ones that I actually use, they're custom hand drawn because, you know, then at least I don't have the same play mat as you. You don't have the same play mat as me because I got an artist to custom it. And it's a one of a one, right? So anyway, those are my concerns about having a magic store in 2023. I think it's gonna be a tough year. I'm not gonna to lie to you. I think 2023, if you watch YouTube, Graham Stefan, Andre Junk, there's nobody on YouTube who thinks 2023 will be a good year, including Joe Biden, who's mentioned that it will be a very bad financial year for a lot of people. Maybe not the best time to have a game store. Sometimes you just gotta cut losses and, and go. So we're, I'm, I'm moving everything online. I'm not gonna sign or buy a physical place because right now all my employees are remote for my marketing agency anyway. And I don't really see uh, them ever, you know, once they become remote, it's very difficult to ask them to not be remote anymore, if not impossible, uh, as I'm finding out that once they go remote, there's no way they go back to working in an office. 
Anyway, let me know in the comments below. Do you agree with my ideas? Do you think your game store, your local, do you have a local game store, first of all? And do you think that they can survive? Now, I know a few of you will comment, oh, my game store is crushing it. Hey, you know, put in the link to your game store or the name of your game store. If your game store is crushing it, I definitely want to look at a few different models. I'm not being facetious. I do want to look at these game stores that are doing well when the economy is doing poorly. Obviously, that would benefit. Um, even give me some idea of maybe they're doing something slightly different from what I think most game stores in Houston are doing. Bye, guys.